Yes, people. Welcome back to the channel. Miles here from Last Bastion. This weekend, both me and Lucy had the privilege of being ringside at the majestic home show, Muay Thai Monarchs. We were so close to the action, we could hear every shot landing. And in this video, I'll be sharing the five things that we learned from this historic event. You ain't never activate a bankai in Wake Mundo, then reap the man's soul. Or put holes in chest like hollows like Ichigo, then bleach my Rambo. First off, I think we have to give massive respect to Kevin Harper and his team for putting on an incredible show at the DW Stadium. The place was packed to the rafters. The crowd absolutely blew the roof off the gaff. It was a stack fight card as well with two WMO world title fights, lots of A-class bouts, rematches, pro-am fights. Importantly, all the fights were 50-50 matchups and all the fighters came for a good tear up. What was mad was that Kevin was not only overseeing the event, but also was in the corner for 19 out of 21 fights on the card. He had more costume changes than Beyonce, changing his top to the fighter sponsored t-shirt every time the fighter had come out. It's a testament really to someone that absolutely lives and breathes Muay Thai. So let's have a look at what we learned. Number one, the Wigan crowd loves a scrap. The room at the DW Stadium had really low ceilings and the crowd was super close to the ring. This created a mad atmosphere. One thing I can say is that Wiganers love a scrap, especially when it's a home fighter. The crowd would cheer every low kick, every right hand, every sweep. The fans created a real electric atmosphere in there and the fighters seemed to feed off it. Every fight, every fighter came to have a real tear up. There was lots of knockdowns, knockouts, cuts, brutal toe-to-toe -to -toe wars. The fight card had the lot. Number two, the girls brought the heat. The last minute clash between Danielle Miranda and Eleanor Fellows delivered. One of the best fights of the night. Miranda, a true fighter, recently secured her WBC national title against hot prospect Emma Rusher about a month ago at the Mazda fight night. She's been on a bit of a rampage, a bit of a wrecking spree, taking on the best fighters up and down the country in her division. She stepped in to take this fight on just 36 hours notice, showcasing that old school fighter mentality. That being said, she was beaten by the young gunner, Eleanor Fellows, a name that has been ringing bells for the last 12 months due to her insane work ethic and being one of the most active fighters in the UK. It's absolutely incredible to think that Eleanor only started training 18 months ago. Through determination and pure ambition, she was able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a much more experienced Daniela Miranda. This girl is going places, a real star girl. Like Vinnie Shulman said at the end of the fight, there's not many people can do that. Nico Carrillo's won, he had a fight after about a week of training, but nobody is reaching that levels that fast such as Eleanor Fellows. It's a massive hats off to her and the team at Johnson's Muay Thai that are smashing it. To be fair to Miranda, I would like to see a rematch after both fighters have had a full camp, but the action in the fight was relentless. Eleanor had this steely look on her face and she just wasn't being denied. I know she was a bit nervous before because of the weight difference, but she just wasn't being denied on the night. And Daniela, as per usual, just had a massive smile on her face, really brought the good vibes and looked like she enjoyed every minute of it. Hats off to both girls for representing themselves, the gyms, and female fighters exceptionally well. Keep an eye out for Eleanor Fellows, she's going places. Number three, a media frenzy. The media at the Muay Thai Monarchs was insane. I've never seen a Muay Thai show with more media presence. To be honest, it's great to see the amount of people that care for the sport and wanna see it grow. We saw Muay Thai magic, Cyan Boxing, of course we were there and Lucy Polgar was doing fighter interviews. Leapfrog handled the live streaming. Gary from Fight Record worked his magic on the posters and the artwork. Sean Aspinall from The Orion Project, an amazing elite sports nutritionist and an amazing sports photographer was there taking some belting pictures. The legend that is Vinnie Shawman was there with his commentary co-host Gavin Sherritt on the commentary but also doing post-fight interviews. Basically, a who's who of Muay Thai content creators were present and it was fantastic to see. Shows like this, fighters like that, fights like that, they deserve the utmost credit, the utmost exposure and yeah, it's brilliant to see the sport grow. Number four, The Boogeyman. The Boogeyman, Alex McGregor, a fighter often avoided, lived up to his reputation in the super welterweight WMO world title clash 
against Josh Hill. Josh Hill was the home fighter, had a massive crowd, but fair play to McGregor's crowd, they travelled a long way and they were there in numbers. These two warriors went to war, leaving it all in the ring. Both were caught, both kicked lumps out of each other and both had massive smiles across the faces absolute madmen. We were lucky enough to be ringside and close to the action and McGregor was walking forward, talking to Josh the whole fight. It'd be interesting to know what he was saying but he was coming forward relentless. I think it was McGregor's grit and a touch of nastiness that helped him clinch the title. To be fair to Josh as well, it's the best I've seen Josh fight. It was a real back and forth, could have gone either way but I think that nastiness just tipped it over for McGregor. Any promoters out there, check out Alex's interview with Lucy on our channel the one fight that he said he'd like is against UK phenom Joe Ryan. What a scrap that would be. Promoters, you need to make it rain. Number five, UK Muay Thai wins. Two new British WMO world champions were crowned at Muay Thai Monarchs. Now, while the event showcased the super welterweight clash between McGregor and Josh, as we've mentioned, earlier in the night, Dan Bonner faced off against a tough Turkish fighter, Enis Yunusoglu. I've definitely butchered that and I'm sorry my mate. They fought for the WMO light heavyweight title. Despite suffering a nasty cut that he had to get stitched up after the fight, Bonner pressed forward and secured the KO victory with a barrage of vicious punches. Both fighters deservedly earned their world titles on Muay Thai Monarchs. Now with McGregor and Bonner's victories, they joined the ranks of the UK WMO World Muay Thai Champions and become the fourth and fifth champions alongside Nico Carrillo, Neve Kinnahan, and Joe Ryan, some five-a-side team, that. Anyone that knows me knows that I am living the dream, being ringside and filming these fighters, going to the gyms, doing interviews, filming the training. That is, that is living the dream for me. Being in front of the camera is really, really out of my comfort zone. I'm not trying to be anything that I'm not. I'm trying to come at this at a more journalistic angle and give you a more rounded experience as to the stories, the fighters and the hard work that goes into these fights. Also, as Last Bastion's levelling up and we're going to have some massive news about Fight Division coming soon, I feel like it's very important to give you an idea as to the behind the scenes and the teams that are working on these big projects that are coming out. So if you've made it this far, really appreciate you tuning in and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. You ain't ever activate a bank I'd wake a mundo then reap the man's soul Or put holes in chests like hollows like Ichigo then bleach for Rambo. <laughs>